Welcome back to Represent NYC on the Manhattan Neighborhood Network. I'm Victoria Burt. Right now we're going to talk about something that is um, something we're pretty much maybe all experiencing, anxiety, stress, and maybe issues with mental health just because of this global pandemic and social distancing and being sort of housebound. Um, and right now I have with me Ashley Womble with Crisis Text Line, which is a really new and interesting way of reaching out for help. Hi, Ashley, how are you? Um, I'm, I'm well, thank you. Thanks so much for having me. So um, what I think is so interesting, just explain to people how, you're, how, you, how you work with people. Sure. So when someone um, feels that they're in crisis, and if it's a crisis to them, it's a crisis to us, they can take their phone out and text crisis to 741-741, and they will get a response back from a crisis counselor. Texting crisis text line is really no different from texting a friend or, or a family member um, for help. The difference is, is that our crisis counselors on the other line are trained at crisis intervention and you don't know who we are and you'll probably never talk to, to that person again. Um, we are have been around for almost seven years. Actually, we, we're headquartered here in New York and we have sent and exchanged 150 million messages since since we launched and we have seen a really big surge in tax especially from new york since the um the since this pandemic and is this the only way to reach out to you is through text right there's no phone calls or anything like that so it's just if i'm home and i'm feeling anxiety feeling stress feeling, feeling suicidal any kind of level of of intensity we can reach out that's right. That's right. Um, typically, people text us about uh, depression or school. School is a really big topic for us because 75% of our texters are under the age of 25. So they may be in middle school, high school, or college. Of course, people of all ages can text us. Relationship issues are another big topic that people text us about, including um, loneliness or abuse. Um, we also um, are here for people who are suicidal, as you, as you mentioned, and that is um, suicide and self-harm are common things that people text us about. Right now, in the past 30 days, the vast majority of our conversations have been about, um, about anxiety. And you are a counselor as well, correct? That's so right. If you, if you can give us, me, anybody who's watching, how do we deal with a couple of things, the isolation? Sure. So something that we've we've been finding, um, there's actually, there's three things we've been finding that does tend to work. Now, we don't have a magic solution for this. We're all in this together and we're, we're, all, we're all struggling um, to, to some degree. And, um, but one thing that we have found that does tend to work well as a crisis counselor when you're texting um, someone who's in crisis to really talk about this specific moment. Like what made you reach out for support today? How can we get planned the next couple of days for you, right? So really staying kind of in the moment or in the span of time, remembering that this is temporary. It's difficult and temporary for us may seem, maybe in New York, it may be another six weeks. The mental health um, impact effects of this may last, will likely last for, for years, right? But it's still temporary. Um, and really kind of taking it, it's that old fashioned advice, take it one day at a time, that does tend to work really well. The other thing, the second thing that's really been helping people is help is identifying other supports in their life. So um, whenever people text us, we do, um, we do help them try to identify people that they can talk to in real life, right? Or maybe that's a FaceTime, right? Um, maybe that is um, joining an online community, right? But helping them create a community of support that they can, they can be with right now, um, in addition, of course, to, to texting with a crisis counselor. And the third thing that's really helping people is knowing that they're not alone. We're really all going through this together. And if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling isolated, if you're feeling grief, um, you know, because you've lost someone or because you're just grieving, um, the grieving the you know, summer plans that you had made, you're not alone. And knowing that you're not alone and having someone to talk to and knowing that this is going to, this moment is going to pass are all things that tend to really help people. So your um, organization can help people who are teenagers, people who are grieving, 
Um, people with addiction issues, people with, uh, is there anything that you don't sort of cover? We cover every, every issue, right? Okay. Um, through our, um, through our crisis counseling via, um, via text. So if people are struggling with addiction, that is, please text us, right? And what we'll do is, you know, we'll talk to you about what made you reach out today? What are some things that we can do to help you get through that hot moment that you're in to a cool calm? And we will give you some referrals. So for example, if you are struggling with addiction, ideally by the end of that conversation, we will, we will have talked about, uh, maybe you go to an online AA meeting. Maybe you want to reach out to a therapist, right? Many of our conversations involve therapy. We're not a replacement for therapy, but we are here for you all the time um, in your pocket and at your fingertips. Talk to me about the new um, For the Frontlines that you just mm -hmm. launched. So one thing that we've noticed um, in our, it, through our data, because one of the things that's really interesting about our service is that because a text is a transcript, essentially, we take every, every message and put it into our data corpus. So we, we have a layer of machine learning so that we can, we can spot trends, right? Um, we noticed that about 4% of our conversations were people saying just the word essential worker. And remember, that's not a phrase any of us used even back in January, right? So we did a little, um, a little digging and we added a question to our, the, our survey at the end of a conversation after that person is feeling calm, of course, is when we would ask that sort of information to find out how many of our texters were essential workers or um, working as a healthcare professional on the front lines. And we found that about 50% of our texters who are texting in because they're in crisis are either an essential worker or um, have an immediate family member who is. And so we launched a campaign called For the Frontlines, which is really an awareness campaign to let healthcare workers know and frontline workers know that we're here for them. We're providing this service that they can, they can use whenever they're in their break room, right? If they get to go into a break room. Um, that if it's the middle of the night, it's the only time they have a chance to text, we're here for them then. And one of the things that's important about this is that T people who are um, healthcare workers, they tend to be over the age of 25. We typically hear from people who are under the age of 25. So we felt like this was an important opportunity and moment to get our number out to people who really, really need it right now. And you also have the Mental Health Fund that started with the uh, celebrity Demi Lovato, right? That's right. So um, because we have seen an increase in volume, um, we're about 40% about overall, and that's in addition, so that's 40% in an increase to where we typically are. Um, and we've also seen that in our, at the other countries where we operate, which is in Canada, the UK and Ireland together. Um, and with the support of Demi Lovato, Richard Branson and a number of uh, corporations, we launched the Mental Health Fund um, to raise money to help support our efforts because we have decided that um, this is a time where we want to make sure that we are reaching people, as many people as we can, as quickly as we can. And so we are staffing up and this fund helps us do that. That's good because you're a nonprofit. So, I mean, you have to be able to run. That's right. Yeah. So um, the Mental Health Fund supports um, our service in all four countries. And then one other really um, thing that one other thing that we've done to make sure that we get support to as many people as we can as quickly as we can is um, we announced this week, in fact, that instead of um, launching country by country, as we've been doing, we're going to start launching language by language. And so That's over great. the next two and a half years, we are going to be offering our service everywhere people speak Spanish, English, French, Portuguese, and Arabic. So currently, right now, you have services available in all those languages, or that's coming? That's coming. Right now, we're in English only in the U.S., Ireland, and the U.K. We operate in French and English in Canada. Um, by the end of 2022, we expect to be in all five of those languages, anywhere people speak it. We had originally planned to do this in five years, but because of COVID um, and because of this global mental health um, pandemic, we knew that we needed to to do this faster. And so we, um, we're going to be, we're working as fast as we can to get these, the service up in these other languages. What are some tools that you think that we can share with anybody watching this if they're experiencing anxiety and they really, they just want to hear some uh, things that they might be able to do and not text anybody or call anybody. Is there anything that we can share with them? Mm -hmm. 
Um, on our website, we have a special um, section for people who are experiencing anxiety around COVID. And then all of the resources that we share with texters are on our website. So while we would encourage you if you're in crisis to text us, if you don't feel comfortable texting or if you don't feel that you're in crisis and you just wanna arm yourself with some resources, you can see those on our website, crisistextline.org. Okay, so Ashley, tell me if you can, what happens? I text you crisis, how long before I speak to a counselor? What are the steps? Sure. So you'll text crisis to 741741. You'll get one automated message. That message will let you know that you've reached crisis text line. There'll be a link to our terms of service and we'll ask you, what's your crisis? You don't have to tell us your whole life story in that next message. Just say, you know, kind of what you're feeling. We will use that message to triage your, the conversation so that if you're in a life-threatening situation, we will make sure that you're connected to a crisis counselor in under one minute. All of our conversations, we, we strive to start with an under five minutes. Speed is really, really important when you're in crisis. And so um, we use technology to enable our crisis counselors to get to textures just as quick as possible. And what are the costs? Does it cost me anything to text you and reach out for help? It doesn't. And in fact, it won't show up on your phone bill. If the service is free, we're 100% supported through philanthropy and foundations. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us, Ashley. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it.